Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to my talk on Horizon, the free EDA package I started working on for about like a bit over a, a year now. So to, to get started, let, let me explain to you why, why someone would uh, write a, a brand new EDA package in 2016, even, even though like there were, there were still many around. So my so th these are these are, are my main uh, points of motivation. Like first of all, I I thought that the uh, management of uh, of uh, symbols and packages and stuff wasn't uh, uh, quite solved the or the, or the optimum way. I liked it. Also, um, supporting actual parts um, was um, is, um, is 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 still thing something I I um, I didn't I didn't see solved to my liking. Um, 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 as you may know, pretty much um, every EDA software consists of many editors like board, schematic, uh, package, symbol, and stuff. And, and, and I wanted to to um, unify all these so so that so that these share code and uh, share the same user experience. <coughs> and, and, and another important aspect was uh, was to have a schematic editor that actually understands what you're doing and, and, and just isn't a program that, that lets you draw lines and labels and then figures out a net list. I want something that really can help you with drawing schematics. And uh, and and last but and last but not least, I, I also placed emphasis on rule driven on rule driven design for um, meeting uh, de uh, design rules and stuff. And some implement implementation details include like uh, making you making use of explicit references. So so not doing things like uh, like one a pin is connected to a to a net line if they happen to be on the same location on the sheet, or that. Um, like nets are connected if they, if they happen to have the same name, and and since uh, programming also has to be fun, I um, I, I, I found um, using um, um, modern OpenGL to, to be quite enjoyable, and and doing a from a from scratch a program also um, gives the possibility to like uh, try new things. So let me give give you give you a quick overview of the implementation details. Horizon is, is written in uh, C++ 14. This uh, caused some issues in the past since uh, compilers still are getting smarter, even even though I thought that that would that lead would be pretty mature already. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's about uh, 50 50,000 lines of code without um, uh, the included external libraries and dependencies. Um, I'm it's using a GTK GTK 3 for a user interface. Which uh, gives us like uh, things such as high DPI scaling for free, and right now it, it builds and runs on any reasonably modern Linux distribution and Windows, and um, it should run and compile on on FreeBSDs as well. Unfortunately, Mac, Mac OS is, is out at the moment, since the uh, the quartz backend of GTK3 on Mac OS doesn't support OpenGL. And uh, and I'm, I'm using uh, JSON for a file format everywhere. Since that makes interfacing with uh, like uh, external scripts much easier, and everything like really everything from like the pin to nets, uh, symbols and stuff, it's all referenced by UUIDs. Since these since these are easy easy to create and they are uh, practically unique by guarantee. So um, let me l let me explain to you what I meant with my first point with management of symbols and stuff. The classic approach is to have libraries. You have a library. In, in a library, you have um, like symbols, symbols or packages that are, that have that sh have similarities, like being a resistor or being a, a logic gate. I I didn't quite like that approach since it's like having a file system with only le one level of, of hierarchy, which doesn't make uh, organizing things uh, very easy. And these aren't also a data aren't a database where you can can just use SQL or something else to query. Instead, the pool, in, in the pool, it's, it's like having like just like one library. Um, in, in the pool, even each item, like so, each symbol, each package, and stuff, is all in its in place in, in its individual JSON, JSON file, which uh, makes merging stuff easier. And since like in having a bunch of, of files uh, scattered, scattered around in a directory, isn't that easy for searching. Um, all of the metadata of these files oh. gets uh, scraped into a SQLite database, which makes uh, searching um, a breeze. And um, to um, and to uh, remove uh, clutter and stuff, 
the, the pool is only supp supposed to can contain parts that, that, you, that you can actually buy. So there won't be like a generic 10K resistor, uh, or six or three resistor, resistor in there instead. You should only like, like uh, go to DigiKey and use the exact manufacturer, and manufacturer's part number since yeah, that's the, that's the only way you can generate a reasonable bomb. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's, how, that, that's how the pool looks. Some of you may be familiar with, with things like uh, symbols and packages, but what are these and wh why do we need these? First of all, let's start with the most tangible thing, the part. As I explained just before, a part is, is a real thing. So a thing, a thing with a manufacturing part number where you can just go to a digi, digi key, type in the part number, and you will get exactly the same part you want. So, yeah, so that also includes like slight variations such as temperature grade and stuff, but that's, that's the way it, it, it has to be done to, make, to maintain consistency. And next on, there's the package. It, um, packages are, very, are rather straightforward as well. It's just like in pretty much every other EDA package, you've got your um, lines for, for silkscreen and stuff, you, you got heads, you also get a, the usual additional layers such as courtyard or assembly outlines and assembly reference designators. So, but, but now the things get a bit more special, namely how the pads are defined. Like um, many other EDA packages just offer like a selection of, of basic pad shapes, but what uh, turns out that manufacturers, especially connector, man man connector manufacturers, really like to create uh, custom pad shape for, for, the, for whatever reason, and Horizon supports the out of the box. So a pad isn't something single like a rectangle, instead a part, a, a part a, sorry, a pad stack is something that you draw like, 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 anything, like anything else. So you basically draw your, your, your copper layers, your, place your drills, and, and, and all that. So, so arbitrary pad shapes are basically built in. Now, th th that raises, raises the problem how to handle like um, simple pad shapes, right? like rectangles, without redrawing the rectangle for ev every single size. Um, to, to solve this, pad stacks can, you, can be parametrized, and to, and to, and to do so, you, uh, a pad stack can be, can be accompanied, uh, accompanied by, a, by a program that's, uh, that's a custom stack-based language to, to, to keep things easy. It, it's it's um, deliberately, deliberately non-Turing complete so that it always terminates in, in, in infinite time and it's basically just, uh, just a way of, of writing mathematical like, expressions so that the program can take external data such as like pad size or pad size or other stuff and modify the, the pad stack itself to suit these requirements. Now, now let's know, now, now you may be wondering where the pins are defined. <coughs> like you, you could go the, tra the traditional way and, and, and just define them in, in the symbol but I, I didn't quite like that approach since I wanted to really separate um, schematic from netless, netless representation. So that, that, was also, that was also for ob obvious reasons. I also didn't want to specify them in the part since you have um, th ma ba many basically identical parts such as like resistors. They are netless wise, they are all the same. But um, yeah, so, so to do so, there are the types entity and unit. The unit is a, it's a thing that actu actually defines the pins. So you can think of the unit uh, as things such as a, like a, a, single, a, a single AND gate, a single AND gate, as a single op amp, or in case of like um, parts, that, parts that only have like one gate, for example, like a microcontroller, a simple one, there's only like, well, the entity just references the single unit. And the entity is a thing that groups the units and, and and makes the like logical device out of them. This has the advantage that if that for the, the netlist only cares about the entities. So when so when we want to change a resistor from a 10k one to a 1k one, the netlist doesn't care since the entity stays the same. We, there's just a note in the netlist that tells um, this instance of this entity, this component, it has this part. I, I guess a lot of um, some of this make it clear in the in the demo. So, and last but not least, there's the symbols. Symbols are pretty easy. They just take the pins as, are they, as they are defined in the unit, and, and you're supposed to like 
uh, draw all the usual, usual symbol stuff like the pins and the text for reference signatures, values, and all the uh, other decorative stuff. The, these small arrows you see there, they are just for uh, showing what's input and what's output. And as I already told, uh, I wanted a schematic editor that actually um, know, knows about nets. So we could like always generate a, always generate a net list on the fly, but that seemed kind, kind, uh, kind of silly to me. So, 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 that's, so that's how it's implemented. The net list is edited in parallel with the schematic, and the actual connections are defined from the net list and net names. So, and the schematic like reads the net names from the net list, or net list and places the appropriate labels and stuff if, if they are there. <clears throat> as, I'm, as, as, as I ruled out in my, in my, as I lined out in my motivation, um, you know, pro proper rules and checks are, are important as well, since in the end you need you want to manufacture manufacture your design and you need to meet certain rules like the rules of the of the PCB house and both, both your rules to ensure that the design actually works. Right now, the, you, there are things things like set it like rules can like actually set a track with. Um, I'll, I'll show that in the demo how that works. Rules uh, can match certain things, so a rule only gets applied if these things match. And rules can also be checked for, like, like clearances and hold size and checklists and stuff. And these rules provide a framework for, like, for basically all things that can be checked. So we've, we've got a framework that makes it easy to add like, new checks for ERC, DRC, and style checks for uh, like packages and stuff. In, in, even though the project is, is, is rather young, I started working on it uh, like um, late late 20, 2016. It's 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 been public since uh, since about a year now, and it's been actually like ready for public consumption for about three months. Like these these are all all, all the things that that are working. Um, some of the things like the inter, like the inter, interactive router are um, leveraged from 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 KiCad, since the especially the, the KiCad router. It's developed rather uh, separately of uh, KiCad since it has its own, own data model. It was surprisingly easy to integrate that. So, so um, right now, Horizon has the same awesome router that KiCad has. And also, um, the handling of, of, of uh, step models for import and export was, was also adapted from KiCad, as well as the calculation of the redness air wires, since that's, that's actually rather, rather difficult. Uh, yeah, and to also support the like usual stuff like undo, redo, copy, paste, even even though some of them are a bit as uh, still an experimental. Yeah, so some things are some things are still missing. Since my plan is to have like one global pool, there needs to be a, a convention in place that everyone adheres to. Um, there's there's some work, work in progress that uh, someone on the internet started and had some really really good ideas. So I think that could go somewhere, and we could also. Um, um, adapt things from the KiCad library convention since they did a really great job there as well. So last but, last but not least, uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks to everyone uh, that, 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 that helped me in the project, except like, um, especially friends and testers, many people on the internet such as, such as on the EV blog and microcontroller.net forum and, and on GitHub that filed issues and basically helped me. And also, I'd, I'd like to thank the KiCad people, since with, without KiCad, Horizon wouldn't be what it, what it is today, since, with, since without the router, thing, uh, things would be um, much less nice. Now, let's, go, let's head on to the, to, the, to, the, to the demo. So, uh, the, so, the, so there are basically two main entry points to use the user interface. For one, the project manager, in the pool manager, I'll start with the project manager. <coughs> so let's just let, let's just open a, an example project, and and and, o and open the schematic. So you got so you got your your usual schematic. Um, so you can so you can like draw nets just by starting fr dragging and starting from from an existing junction. And now let's let's actually uh, put um, so I saw there's a, there's a USB connector in there right now. Now just let me 
deleted one, so so I can show you how how show how adding new things work. <coughs> Um, I select place part, then the uh, like uh, pool part browser pops up. It's normally a bit better if, if you got if you got a screen with a high and higher resolution. So let's place uh, that USB USB connector. There's a preview of the of the uh, symbol, and to the right there's a preview of the package how it looks like. Just 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 let me place that one like this. Rotate it, and now now I press O to add to add um, like a round symbol. That attaches like that, and just let me connect this just by clicking and dragging from there. And also, let me add some labels to, to connect these. So just so let's let's just name this net like USB B minus and USB B plus, and and now. Instead, well, so if I would like name, like do do that like, like it's unusual, and so I'll just rename this, then th th this will throw an error, since like now it created a second net with the same name, and that will cause uh, it's called a warning. And in, what I have to do instead is uh, to use the tool to like move this net segment to another net. So like take these strings that are connected to this net segment at the moment and connect them to a new net. That makes things much much more explicit. So I just connect this one to USB D plus, and this one to like uh, USB, uh, like uh, USB D minus, and and just because we can, let's make them or if it's useful, let's make them a different differential pair. That's as easy as that. So let's save that. Go to the uh, board editor. And go back to the schematic editor, and click a place part uh, to board, and this will uh, pull up the board editor with the uh, with uh, the part and the cursor for placing it. Let's place it just here like so, and use the uh, interactive router in the, in the differential pair mode to just route this differential pair track to the USB pins of the microcontroller. Just easy as that. You can also like. It supports all the things that you know from the Kakad router, like um, not making collisions and stuff. Just um, let's hope that that this fits on the screen. That's that's how um, like uh, like the clearance rules work. You, you you can add rules that like match certain nets. You, you can either match like uh, net like net class or the net itself or the um, or the net name using using a regular expression, and and for each match, you you, you can you can define you you have your your full clearance matrix, so so the, so the, like the minimum distance between uh, these types of copper. <laughs> and when looking for the right one, it it just starts at, at the top and and looks for the first one that matches. Like um, I guess users of Altium may find this a bit familiar. Yeah, and there are also other rules such as like. Uh, Clearance from copper to, to non-copper things, for example, like board edges or holes, and also other rules for like for, for copper planes, and rules for track width. So if a track uh, has um, has its width set to, to be loaded from the rules, I, I can just uh, alter the I can just alter the line the track width in there. Uh, hit apply, and then it gets applied to all the tracks, so that I don't have to change everything, and everything stays nice and consistent. <coughs> yeah, and I, I also got a 3D preview. Right now, it's, it, 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 take, it, it takes a bit to load the models, since these are step models, and uh, triangulating them takes a bit of time. So now, now they are there. And I have also some uh, visual aspects, like I can change the background color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some features that, that actually might be useful. I can when I uh, like let me turn off some of these, and to better see how the layers are stacked, that I can I can like explode these, so I can actually look into the PCB. I um, right, right now it's, it's, a, it, it's a bit silly, but but uh, but I guess it, it, it's useful when you got uh, like man, PCB with um, with many more layers. 
Um, yeah, um, I, I, I also got some, some like, like goodies. For, for example, I, in, instead of using usual things for like box selection, I also have selection modes such as lasso. So I can, I can draw, just draw a lasso and everything that's within it will be selected. Yeah, and, 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 um, as, and, and as the KiCad people do, I also got like a selection filter. So, I, so if I like now, for example, I only want to, to select tracks, just, uh, just select tracks and it'll only and it'll only select tracks and not like packages and stuff is that okay then then it's time's up and questions please how can we contribute uh, just uh, go to, go to the uh, fostem page and find the link to, to the github repository and just like File issues, open pull requests, and stuff. You're welcome. Do you have some kind of IRC or something like that? Uh, no, I don't have a, like a dedicated IRC channel. But if there's a need for one, I guess we can just grab a channel or on Freenode or OFTC or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just let me delete the USB connector I, I added. Let me delete this in here. Press save to save the netlist, and then I'll press reload netlist, and then it'll it's gone. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A, a piece where it works. I have a, I mean, maybe stupid question, yeah. but why why not just join the CDN? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the so the question was uh, why not uh, contrib contrib contribute to to, to Kikad? Um, like, uh, as I explained earlier, I really wanted to implement uh, the uh, like the parts management the proper way, since like the, since and the like how parts and symbols and stuff are managed is like the core of every EDA package. And, like changing that would would um, need changing everything. So it's uh, and it also would have caused a lot a lot of friction, since like as I said, the. Um, Way how the symbols and packages are handled is really the core. So that's that's why I decided to start to, to start over. Yeah. 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 So it looks like if somebody came to propose something, yeah. there would be fertile ground for yeah, but yeah. discussion. Yeah. So did you try uh, discussing with the Kika? Uh, actually, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So how to anyway, so how to repeat it? Okay. About the, yeah.
one more question. Just, uh, yeah. Okay, three very quick questions. You, you, <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, so the question is whether minor lattices, lattices are compatible. No, they aren't. They are, they are just uh, JSON. Since uh, my um, my thought of, of storing things was just like serializing the internal objects, and, um, comp and compatibility, can, uh, in, in my opinion, can can be cared for by exporters. Okay, one, one from Fastar. Yeah. Okay, so the question was whether it was hard to integrate the interactive router. Yeah, there were some impedance mismatches, such as the uh, keycard router, like um, thinking of uh, things being connected if they are on the same position, uh, like in, in Horizon, they are connected if they connect to the same junction. So I had to, had to do some like, match, like, figure, uh, like matching things in there, but, but it, it also re required some changes uh, to the canvas to like, interactively hide things and stuff. But overall, it was it, it was doable. Would you be able to pull in changes as they uh, as we as we um, keycard on it before? Uh, yeah, I I did so once uh, just by doing a doing a good pull on the keycard reaper and using melt to to merge changes over. Since I didn't modify the actual router, since all the interface between the router and the uh, and host application is it's, it's in its own class. Okay, last question. Uh, both. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm asking because yeah. uh, what I notice, I'm actually one of the keycard devs. Hmm. Uh, so I notice that most of uh, the new projects are heavily maker driven. Yeah. And these people mostly come from the IT background. Yeah. So that's why uh, part management is a uh, top priority for them. I mean, this is just my, my, my yeah. opinion. Because, uh, you know, we all hardware engineers. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.